Hi campers, hope you're well. Welcome to Mountain Zebra National Park. This is January 2023 and we're doing a review of the campsite for you and some general facilities in the park. Uh, unfortunately my gimbal's battery has ended its life so I'm going to try and do this as steady as I can with free hand. This is the entrance road to the park. Campsite runs in a circular fashion, starting from a road behind there, we'll go up to, goes around, around, comes back here. This is all camping. In the middle is the communal facilities and all the way up against the hill is the chalets and the, I think they call them rock homes or something like that, which is more luxurious. Really, really nice campsite. We've been here for four days now. Uh, blistering hot in January, so be warned. Make sure you bring swimming clothes and sunscreen and that you attend very carefully to which way you orientate your camp or your tent or whatever it may be. Afternoon sun burns the wax out of you. So I would highly recommend to make sure you faced east with your Call it your entertainment area of your van. Uh, morning sun is also hot, but afternoon sun is almost unbearable. So we made the mistake of pitching our camper west just because it has a nice view of the valley. Uh, something which I would never recommend, but because of the view we tried it and definitely not suggested that afternoon sun is totally unbearable. So up there is a filling station, they don't have LPG gas, but they have petrol, diesel and a compressor. Uh, there is quite a few 4x4 roads in the camp, uh, nothing too heavy, uh, but yeah, nice and exciting 4x4 routes you can take on. So coming to the first site, on your right hand side here, a few sites in a circular fashion about four sites in total, sorry, five of them. That's the bathrooms you see in the back. Next set of sites over here. Of course, these are fully exposed to morning and afternoon sun, except for that one site in that corner, which is nicely shaded by morning and afternoon sun where that tent is pitched. It is right next to the bathrooms though. So you won't have much privacy, but uh, definitely one of the better sites in terms of shade. Facilities here while we're walking around. Facilities here are exceptionally clean. Staff is really, really helpful. Uh, there's a kitchen, communal kitchen, laundry facilities, washers and dryers. Uh, there's a well-equipped shop with meat and ice and everything you might need. Two more sites in here. Another one that side. All these sites are quite exposed to the sun. I'll point out to you, as I mentioned, that one with the tent it would be my first option um, if you can get your van in there. There's also three swimming pools in the camp, one right by the rest camp, another one outside in the wilderness area, and then also a lovely rock pool out in the wilderness area. I'll post little videos of those as well. This is a nice little site here, but once again, only protects you from the morning sun. Afternoon sun is gonna get you from the other side. In terms of orientation, the sun rises there and it sets over there. So that's west. So whichever way you face, make sure you do not face west. This is a nice little private site, campsite number 19. But unfortunately, as I said, it's gonna protect you from the morning sun coming from behind there. But the afternoon sun is gonna get you. Uh, unless you pitch your entertainment area towards the paved area in your van over here, then it could work, but your van is still going to get extremely hot in that afternoon sun. These sites, number 20 and 21 to the left, I would definitely not recommend. They've got no, no shade protection whatsoever. And then this one over here um, is quite an interesting one. So 
you're exposed to the morning sun, but you're not exposed to any of the afternoon sun because of those trees there. The sun sets on that side. So that's quite a nice one. You can see it's now about two o'clock in the afternoon and the shade is starting to pull over that van, uh, which is nice and shaded. These ones, 23, 24, 25, this is our setup. Uh, you can see the view we were aiming for at the back there, but that's where the sun sets and it's just not recommended at all. As I was saying, bathrooms, kitchen facility, communal kitchen, laundry, washer, dryers, uh, communal fridge and freezer if you need that. Uh, so that's all there and really well maintained. It's actually the first campsite I was in, which we've never had a problem with hot water. And the shower heads is all rain shower heads. So beautiful pressure, really, really nice. In terms of all the sites combined, this is the one I would go for. After spending four days here, I've been keeping an eye on this one. It's site number 28. Um, it, you will get a bit of morning sun, but this trees over here shade you from that blistering afternoon sun. I would highly recommend this one if you uh, are trying to stay out of the sun. And then this site over here, site number 29, starting from here, circles around and ends over here at site 36. So if you're camping in a group, this is a nice circular fashion site, but once again, no protection from the sun whatsoever. So that's it for the campsite. In terms of water taps, you have your normal copper water tap over here. It's a 15 millimeter fitting. So make sure you have enough fittings. Let's zoom into this one here. Make sure you have enough fittings. Uh, taps are few and far in between. So if you've got a van like mine that you need to fill every couple of days, instead of pulling the van back and forth, make sure you've got a long enough hose. I would say at least 20 meters to reach to your van. Uh, power points is electrical power points. Uh, normal free plug power points, nothing funny about that. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it. In terms of the camp in general, as I said, really impressed with the camp. Uh, we've been to every single national park camp over the past three years, except for Bontebok and Richtersveld. And this is definitely one of my favorites. Not the big five, but there's more than enough game to see. Absolutely lovely cheetah tracking activities that you can take part in. And you actually do a walk and walk straight up to the cheetah in the wild uh, with a ranger and they walk you about 10 to 20 meters from the cheetahs and you can spend the morning with them. Normal game drives and uh, yeah just an absolutely lovely park. If you have any questions as always please like, share and subscribe to keep posted with all our reviews as we post them. We're going from here to Addo down to Storms that on the end and then back home to Cape Town. And if you have any questions, please share and comment and we'd be more than happy to answer them.